Uh, if you remember in the last week's lectures, we were looking at stability. We ended uh, with interesting examples, all right, of stability uh, that is attractive but not stable, asymptotic, asymptotically stable, globally asymptotically stable, non-uniform stability, and so on and so forth. Okay, and then finally, what we had done was we had uh, sort of proved some uh, simpler results for linear systems. Okay. So, uh, what were the simpler results? It sort of uh, characterized stability in the form of uh, bounds on the state transition matrix. Okay, but in spite of all of this, we sort of explained, and I hope all of we us understood that uh, this uh, sort of characterization is still a, a definition of stability. Okay, it should be considered a definition of stability and not necessarily a test of stability because uh, using these definitions is not uh, it's very easy okay uh, for time varying linear systems you will still require to uh, solve the system in order to get state transition matrices in order for us to be able to talk about boundedness okay so these are still to be seen as definitions and not as tests and that's where we are going to move on to this week so we start with our uh, material on Lyapunov theorems. Okay, you can see that I'm using my uh, earlier NPTEL notes. So these parts are there is some commonality here. Of course, there is a. Uh, I mean, we will look at a little bit more detail on some proofs, uh, but that will come probably later this week, or actually it won't come this week. It probably come next week. Okay, so like I said, I'm out on Friday, so we will not have a class on that. All right. So, let us first look at the results, alright, we just look at the results how to use them and we will look at the proof uh, of you know one or two of these results uh, later, okay, that is the idea. That way we are you know we have some handle on what we are even trying to do, okay. So, uh, as I had mentioned very clearly I think that uh, there is a problem with stability definitions, we have to solve the system of equations, okay. Now, this is has to be the case because if you are using epsilon delta of any form you will have to solve yeah we whatever examples we took we actually solved the system okay and which is not possible for most nonlinear systems okay and so we are looking at uh, actually not quantitative but i would say more qualitative methods yeah but anyway i will leave this word as it is because uh, depends on how you think about it okay all right um so, before we go on to talk about the Lyapunov theorems, we need some uh, background, okay. So, we first talk about function classes. Uh, all of you already know a few function classes by the way. These are characterized by the LP norms, the capital LP norms. So, you already are aware of some certain function classes, yeah. These are uh, additional function classes that we are going to talk about. So, uh, so, I hope you keep in mind that there are several kinds of categories of functions that we tend to invoke in all our analysis okay uh, so what are these function classes the first one is a class k function okay and a, and all of these functions are defined from r plus to r plus okay so non negative reals to non negative reals okay r plus denotes non negative reals so zero is included in this set okay so a function phi um, is of class k if it is continuous strictly increasing and it is 0 at 0 okay that is it only these three conditions okay examples are like I like it is mentioned here 1 minus e minus x and x why you can verify when x is 0 this is 0 right. So, here also I have mentioned if, if you take phi x equal to x this is one of the simplest examples right because it is 0 at 0 it is definitely strictly increasing right you can take a partial and see and it is definitely continuous in fact it is smooth yeah. Similarly, you can take any other polynomial you can imagine that any polynomial would work yeah polynomials are in fact analytic functions so way more than smooth yeah they are even beyond smooth. So, polynomials all work yeah 
as long as the coefficients are positive and all the nice things happen, right? Otherwise, it might be uh, decreasing. Yeah, that is a problem. So typically, if you take uh, you know x square is also fine. Okay, it's also an increasing function. Yeah, because we are looking only at zero and beyond. Yeah, arguments are non-negative reals. Okay, so therefore this works. Yeah, so this also works on the negative side. But if I take x cubed and all, then there is a problem. All right. Okay. Then finally, we have a function which is of this kind, one minus e minus x. I keep using this example, even for supremum, I use this example. It actually turns out to be a very nice, interesting function. Uh, one minus e minus x. If I take partial with respect to x, it is what e minus x, which is positive, right? Whenever uh, you know x is non-negative and as long as x is not infinity and infinity is anyway not part of real so we are fine okay so therefore this is a uh, also a continuous function in fact smooth again also a strictly increasing function and it's zero at zero so all three functions satisfy these criteria okay is that clear so this is what is a class k function remember arguments are always scalar valued non-negative reals and the output is also or the image is also scalar valued non negative reals okay so scalar valued functions are all we are talking about do not ever design a vector valued function or a vector argument function and think of it as class k no okay there is no such characterization all right class l function slot of a flipped version a function phi again you see that this never changes is class l if it is continuous, strictly decreasing, and it is the initial value is finite. Okay. An example is 1 over x plus 1, because at 0, this is of course 1. Uh, it is strictly decreasing, is evident, right? Because as x keeps increasing, again remember x is an r plus, right? As x keeps increasing, this keeps decreasing. Obvious. And it is continuous continuity. You can also verify continuity, yeah, yeah because it is there is only continuity issue at x equal to minus one, but that's not a valid argument, so it's fine. Okay, uh, one of the things that we need to note is that if a function is class k, then it doesn't mean that the negative is class L. Okay, I hope this is uh, sort of obvious because as soon as I take a negative, my image lies in r minus yeah which in itself is not allowed okay so as a definition it's not allowed yeah so negative of class k function is not a class l function all right so negative valued functions we don't use yeah this is just a why we talk about these functions is these are what make up lyapunov functions yeah and lyapunov functions if anybody has ever seen these are actually like energy like functions and we never talk about negative energies in well, not in our community i mean maybe in quantum uh, uh, we can talk about it but but uh, i'm not an expert there so i can't comment on it but but yeah here we don't obviously have notions of negative energy so so lyapunov functions typically have connotations of energy so obviously we don't allow negative valued quantities here okay so class k and class l two characterizations now we have Another characterization which is a sort of a stronger characterization, it is a class k r function. Okay? A function again same arguments is class k r if it is class k and it goes to infinity as the argument goes to infinity. Okay? That is it. This is the only additional requirement. Okay? So uh, the, one of the examples we considered for class k deliberately was this. And that function looks like this, strictly increasing by the way, no problem, but it maxes out at 1, alright, never exceeds 1 for whatever value of the argument, right, because plot looks like this, keeps getting closer and closer to 1, but never actually hits 1, yeah. Uh, so this is not class KR, because even though the argument becomes infinite uh, or tends to infinity, we are all talking about tending to infinity your function value will tend to 1 in fact, yeah, so not infinity. So these are, uh, there is a certain limitation about these functions, that is why they are only class k, yeah, and not class k r. Um, but if you take these polynomial functions that we 
looked at, they have all the nice properties, right? It goes to infinity as the argument goes to infinity. So these are, in fact, class K R functions. Okay. So uh, as we move on, you will see that class K functions are connected with notions of uh, local stability or stability. Uh, class K R functions are connected to notions of global stability. Okay. And class L functions are connected to uniformity. Okay. So, these are the three classes of functions and then the three kind of stability definitions we have seen. Everything else is, else is a sort of combination of all this, right? Because you, you say that you have some kind of, um, you know, stability, uniform stability, global stability, global uniform stability. And then there is the, uh, you know, qualifiers of asymptotic and so on and so forth. That is okay. That also we will see how they are connected. Okay. But local stability typically class K tested via class K functions, global stability via class K R functions and uniformity using class L functions. Alright. Okay. So, one of the key things that anyway I have I mean, I've already mentioned is that we use, uh, uh, we assume an equilibrium of uh, 0. Okay. We assume the equilibrium to be 0. Alright. Say that again. No, R is just, uh, I have just, instead of using X, I have just used R. Just the argument. Okay. I have just changed the labeling on the argument. Alright. So, it is a class R function. Uh, sorry. It is a class K R function. Uh, not that R. Okay. This is just some, some uh, notation for the argument. Yeah. I have just replaced X by this. Yeah. Alright. Okay. Great. Now, uh, we are in a position to talk about definiteness. Okay. Once we have defined this class K function, class K R function, we can talk about definiteness. Okay. Before I even go to definiteness, I hope all of you, I mean, we just looked at it, you know, a couple of classes ago. Uh, for matrices, symmetric matrices, you have very clean and clear notions of definition, definiteness. Here, uh, you have this notation, by the way. Whenever I use this notation, this means that the matrix is positive definite, right? Because there is no idea of positivity of matrix otherwise, right? So, whenever I use this notation A greater than 0, it means I am saying that the matrix is positive definite, okay? You also know that uh, it means that the quadratic forms are always positive for non-zero x. You also know that the eigenvalues of A are always positive and all principal minors have positive determinant. Yeah, we exactly looked at these three characterizations. Okay, for positive definiteness of matrices. Now, what we want to do is generalize positive definiteness of matrices to functions. Okay, because again, uh, those of you who had exposure to doing internal stability for linear systems, you know that you use something like the Lyapunov equation, right? And the Lyapunov equation essentially looks like what? It says that Right, where Q is uh, and Q and P are symmetric matrices. So, given so the statement, of course, goes more formally like given a Q, there exists a P which solves this Lyapunov equation. Yeah, why, why this characterizes stability is because uh, you choose your V, a Lyapunov candidate, in fact, a Lyapunov function, in fact, as X transpose Tx for the system, right? And if you take a derivative of this v dot and your system is governed by x dot equal to ax because this is the system for which we are studying the stability, then v dot is actually turns out to be x transpose p a plus a transpose p x, okay? Alright, okay, makes sense. And this, yeah, is in fact, in fact, I did not write it completely. This is positive definite, this is positive definite. Okay, you actually require that given any positive definite symmetric Q, you can obtain a positive definite symmetric P which satisfies this Lyapunov equation. Okay, and once we have that, essentially what we are saying is that this becomes a positive definite function, right? It is a sort of extension of positive definiteness from matrices 
two functions. So this is now a function of x, right? So, so this is what we want to connect. Now we want to say that we may have more general forms, okay? Then x transpose p x something quadratic, something simple. Because nonlinear systems have a lot of different structure, right? You don't, you can't necessarily say that for every nonlinear system I can use a quadratic Lyapunov function. All right, that's it, in itself a big assumption. If you say that there exists a quadratic Lyapunov function for a nonlinear system, that's a very big assumption already. Yeah, because you are somehow saying that you can use linear notions to analyze this nonlinear system. Okay. So anyway, so. The point is we want to have a more general characterization of positive definiteness for functions, okay, okay, great. Uh, so that's where we are going, that's where we are going, that's the aim here. So definiteness, uh, what does it mean? It says that uh, positive definiteness requires that you have a scalar valued continuous function which is of time and of some states belonging to a ball of radius r, that's this guy. Right, this is what is the ball of radius r, we have already spoken about it. If you use different norms, you will get different shapes here. You can get in general, you can think of it as an ellipse yeah, or a circle, but you can also get square and rhombus and what not depending on the norm you choose. Okay? But it is a ball, we keep calling it a ball of radius r. Okay? Yeah? We, otherwise, you have to say neighborhood and all that. Yeah? So, that makes life a little bit more complicated. All right. Okay. Uh, great. So, we want this function v and this is the most standard notation you will ever find of time and states belonging to a local region and it maps to real numbers. Okay. It is always scalar valued. So, energy like. Yeah. Again, energy is the most, if you think kinetic energy, potential energy, scalar value. Take in the states give you some scalar value okay so that is the most obvious characterization of v yeah but remember in more often than not we do not use the energy of the system as v okay uh, in a several cases we do but many more times we do not all right okay what do you require from this this is as of now i have only defined the uh, you know domain and the range okay uh, what do i require i require that it is 0 for 0 states okay the function has to be zero valued when the states are at zero it is almost like a norm condition remember yeah has to be zero when states are zero for all t in r plus okay it doesn't matter what t is if i put zero states it's almost like saying that at equilibrium if my right hand side of the system is zero then this function which i'm trying to analyze use to analyze the system cannot be non zero when the states are 0, okay, does not make sense. So, it has to be 0 when the states are 0. There has to exist a class k function phi such that this function dominates phi norm of x. Notice how the class k function has been used, okay. I mentioned very clearly that the class k functions have domain and range as non-negative reals, okay. So, but we are talking about states. So, how do we compare? We use the norm of the state as the argument. Okay, the argument of a class K function will always be the norm of the state. It can be a weighted norm, no problem. Yeah, but it has to be a norm. Okay, all right. So why? Because the norm is always non-negative. So by virtue of taking the norm, I made the argument non-negative. Okay, all right, great. So important thing to remember is that this does not mean that v is strictly increasing. Hmm? V only has to dominate a strictly increasing function. Notice this, look at this picture here. V does not have to be strictly increasing itself. If I think of phi x as this function, a strictly increasing continuous function which is 0 at 0 and v itself is also 0 at 0, v does not have to be strictly increasing. It can oscillate, but it has to remain above this line. Also, remember, my states were always requ required to be in this ball, bounded ball. Therefore, this domination also does not need to last forever. It only needs to last until the norm of the states, in fact, this is not x, but this is uh, 
norm of x yeah this only has to last until the norm is less than r beyond that it doesn't need to last okay so two things this characterization number two does not mean that v is strictly increasing only requires to be bounded by a strictly increasing function and does not have to be bounded for all states yeah it has to be bounded only for certain states in a certain ball of radius r okay that's how we are uh, right doing this characterization and that's it this is what is positive definite function this is how we define it okay we have still not connected it with the matrix definition uh, for linear system we will we'll go there okay so so of course like i said positive definiteness will connect to asymptotic stability we will look at how don't worry about it now if you look at uh, if you uh, if you think of this norm x and then you know norm x is something like this this is the two norm for example okay then a phi norm x is uh, basically uh, some an, if you can think of phi norm x as uh, something like this this is a class k function remember i hope you are convinced this is a class k function yeah i am sort of using this i mean going reverse and constructing a v a positive definite v by the way huh? usually that's not the case first you are given a v then you have to think of a phi i am sort of going the opposite side just to give an example okay you know the two norm the just the euclidean distance and then suppose i construct this class k function this is a class k function i hope you are convinced is anybody not convinced that this is a class k function all you have to verify is that at z that it's zero at zero it is it is strictly increasing do you believe it's strictly strictly increasing yeah this can be written as 1 minus 1 over norm x square plus 1 so it's strictly increasing and uh, it has to be continuous or it is continuous in the norm yeah not difficult to see that it's continuous in the norm yeah only issue would have happened here but there is a square here so obviously not an issue okay so this is continuous strictly increasing 0 at 0 valid class k function so if my vtx is something like this this guy yeah then this is going to dominate phi norm x yeah for all t greater than t in r plus okay for all t in r plus this is going to dominate this guy so this v is a positive definite function okay notice how uh, different it is from your linear system sort of positive definite function huh? characterization is rather different okay i hope that's clear